Welcome to ANIC, the Australian National Insect Collection. We are located in Canberra at Australia's National Science Agency. We manage over 22,000 drawers of pinned insects in our collection. Our material is curated, identified, digitized, studied and photographed to create an outstanding research infrastructure. This is Annex Director, Dr. David Yates. Thank you very much, Olivia. With our 12 million specimens, we are by far the largest collection of Australian insects on the planet. And our very first insects were collected by Charles Darwin in 1836. Annex's purpose is to discover and characterise Australia's unique insect biodiversity so that it can be conserved, managed and used for the benefit of our people, industry and environment in a changing world. We have two major initiatives currently underway in the collection. The first is around collection genomics, generating genomic scale molecular data from specimens in the collection and also uh, digitising the collection. So creating digital images of every specimen in the collection and digital database records of every specimen in the collection. And here we are with Dr. Federica Turco, and she is our collections manager. At the moment, we're still growing our collection. We estimate roughly 1% of the collection per year. This growth is mainly due to um, original new collections that we do in the field, but also to donations, in particular in, in this hall, in the Lepidoptera area and in the Coleoptera. The Australian National Insect Collection is not a museum, so we don't have um, a public uh, exhibition space, but we collaborate uh, with uh, national uh, museums here in Canberra. We are primarily a research collection. So we will be moving into a purpose-built new facility in a few years. Every year we describe over 200 species of insects, and that includes charismatic flies, weevils and also insects preserved in amber. This year we named five new rubber fly species after Stan Lee and the Marvel character. The Anna collection is stored in three main halls. This is one of them, the Compactus Hall. Come with me. We are studying species that could threaten Australia's biosecurity and we're also unraveling the diversity of mosquitoes in Australia. Would you like to show us something, Brian? Hi. Here are some of the mosquitoes we have in our collection. There are 400 species endemic to Australia, but only half of them have formal scientific names. So I'm working with our collection to name new species so they can be used by surveillance officers from separating endemic species to test species we want to keep out of the country. So we are also using our collection to discover new products from nature. Spiderwebs are very interesting because they are a group that has not been studied very well in Australia, so there's a lot of new species that we need to discover. And it's not only the diversity of species that we're looking at, we're also looking at the diversity of venoms that they produce. So spiderwebs venom is a cocktail of hundreds of molecules, and some of them have been found to have an effect in um, sodium channels that are involved in neuronal function. Because of this effect, we think that they may be um, useful to treat conditions like Alzheimer's and epilepsy or Parkinson's. When I came to Australia, I was wondering what I can do in my new country to make a difference. And one of those things that I could do was actually to make uh, the beetle in Australia more accessible to other scientists, students and the general public. We know that there is about 40,000 described species of beetles in Australia, but there's probably another 40,000, if not more, depending how many weevils are there to be described. Here is an outstanding example of the crossover between art and science. I'm here with extraordinary artist, Ex de Medici, and she's going to explain to us her inspiration. When I first arrived here to work, Ted Edwards and Marion Horak, basically gave me a crash course education on Lepidoptera. I knew nothing about how representation operated uh, in terms of scientific representation, which is not what I do. It has artistic license as well as an observation of characteristics, but their guidance for me for many, many years has been invaluable. The Ulysses butterflies, they have this 
very appealing iridescent patterns and when they open and close they might appear and disappear and usually when they're resting they have their wings flapped together so they can totally camouflage in their backup. Each insect specimen is a unique source of biological information. Each one is a snapshot of space, time, and genetic heritage. Our collection is a permanent resource for research, and it's available not only for the Australian community, but also for scientists all around the world who are helping us quantify our insect fauna and also preserve our critically endangered species. 20 years ago, we had no idea that we would be able to sequence degraded DNA from old specimens so effectively. Today, new technologies allow us to retrieve large amounts of genomic data from our museum material. We are using this information to find new products in nature, understand insect declines, and study insect pollination networks. Much of this work is being delivered through the Environomics Future Science platform at CSIRO. And through these innovative approaches and the work we do here at the collections, we hope to contribute to a better understanding of our biodiversity and a more sustainable future.